used to you, it'll get better. It, of course it'll get better. But truth be told, no matter how hard I tried, no matter how good I was, no matter what I did, they were still gonna find a way to destroy me. But that's not how Piers Morgan sees it. Yeah, nobody set out to destroy you. Uh, you destroyed yourselves in this country with your ludicrous, hypocritical behavior. Truth be told, what she just said is completely not garbage. Harry and Meghan's romance, engagement and marriage were all greeted with ecstatic joy by the British media, the public and the royal family that they've all now abandoned. That's the truth. Not Harry and Meghan's truth, but the actual truth. Three episodes down and three to go. The jury is out on whether Netflix invested wisely in the couple. There has been various ways people have described the series from boring to hypocritical to even a snooze fest from Piers Morgan. Online, Dan Rutten tweeted, for a couple who claim they care about their privacy, in less than half an hour, Ari and Meghan have already shared with the world private text message exchanges, private photos from their dates, private video diaries, and private clips of their son. Another Twitter user wrote, I remember when a huge crowd came out for Harry and Meghan's wedding. Such joy and cheers for the both of them. Clearly the sign of a racist Britain. And Meghan and Harry are a disgrace, completely unfit to carry royal titles. And finally, if Meghan and Harry hate the monarchy so much, if they think the institution is racist, if they feel oppressed in Britain, why do they continue to exploit their royal titles? For With uh, the violence with, with which women are subjected to and what we had and what has become international was a uh, exchange between, between former lady in waiting Lady Susan Hussey and Ngozi Fulani of the Sister Space Charity. Uh, the transcript of it is excruciating and it's gone worldwide and this has caused the monarchy a great deal of embarrassment. So there is, there's absolutely no doubt the issue of racism is one that not only is at the forefront of news dealing with the royal family. It overshadowed the first uh, day of uh, the Prince and Princess of Wales's visit to Boston, just as the trailer for right. the first trailer for uh, the Sussex's Netflix series overshadowed the second day. Right. The, right. The, the visit was to launch the Ursha Prize for the Environment, which is a very important project which William has founded. Right. And no doubt that was very problematic. Interestingly, what stands out in this entire row or the controversy is that Harry and Meghan have not spoken out for the first time. It's not the first time, of course, that Meghan and Harry spoke out against the British royalty, as we all know. An interview of Meghan and Harry with celebrity talk show host Oprah Winfrey in October last year included a series of explosive revelations about the couple and their fraught relationship with the British royal family. The Sussexes openly accused the royal family of failing to protect them both emotionally and financially. Meghan even said that she was subjected to relentless racist attacks and that life as a royal had made her suicidal. She had revealed that the royal family did not correct the false narrative around her. Harry, in the meantime, had said he felt let down by his father. Now, the Harry and Meghan docuseries lashing out at the British royal family comes ironically in the backdrop of the new Prince and Princess of Wales visiting the United States. Kate and William's first overseas trip after the death of Queen Elizabeth II that started on the 30th of November became an occasion to show the world as much about who they are, not as who they want to be. The visit comes less than three months after the death of Elizabeth whose personal popularity dampened criticism of the crown during her 70-year reign. Over the three-day visit to Boston, the Wales met President Joe Biden, called in on an environment non-profit organization, visited the iconic JFK Library and Museum, and gave away the second annual Earthshot Prize. What did stand out during this entire trip, however, was their not meeting Harry and Meghan in the United States underscoring and bringing out into the open a long-standing feud between the royal brothers and their wives. And on 
Last time William and Kate came in 2014, they were met by these rapturous crowds in New York, and they went to the Nets game, and they met Jay-Z. I mean, there was this incredible um, fascination with them. I did lots of media engagement around that, that visit. Will this visit generate that same level of excitement given Meghan and Harry, and given the fact that they have really kind of now staked out America as their own? We associate America with Harry and Meghan. And I'm not trying to say it's necessarily an adversarial relationship, but certainly the way that Harry and Meghan have positioned themselves and claimed California as their space makes this visit one that will, I think, be more nuanced or potentially a little more complicated for um, Kate and William to navigate. All right, let's quickly go back to Richard Fitzwilliams. Richard, what do you make of the timing? Barely three months since King Charles III formally proclaimed himself as king. There's a racism row simmering in the palace. Kate and William have, of course, visited the US at a very tricky time. What do you make of the timing of the release of these trailers as well? Although Netflix obviously had the ultimate say into when the trailer was released, it will no doubt be seen since to release a trailer of the sort that was released, having images, intimate images of Harry and Meghan and also uh, an, an image of Kate at a particularly unhappy period, uh, it, this was linked to the Commonwealth Day um, commemoration at Westminster Abbey in 2019. Uh, sorry, this was linked to the Commonwealth Day commemoration at Westminster Abbey, where there was a clear threesome between Cambridge and the Sussex. Right. Releasing that trailer when they did was clearly a seismic moment for the relations with the royal family. I do think that that has also affected the traumatic death that she suffered in that terrible accident um, two years after Panorama. There's little doubt that that haunts Harry, and I think it is behind his concerns about security for himself and his family. And indeed, uh, there's little doubt that the issue of Diana is very, very for it's in the fall of his the way he thinks and also his fears all but right. there's no doubt at all that the toxicity mm. of what appears to be the charges against the royal family Speaking of the racism row surrounding the Buckingham Palace and the long-standing claims of Harry and Meghan about racial insensitivity, insensitivity in Buckingham Palace, how, how do you view these allegations?